Welcome teachers to this Bite Size PD where the topic is tips for using Parent Square. So the learning intention for this Bite Size PD is you're learning ways to utilize Parent Square to support your use and implementation of the program. So with this Bite Size PD, it's going to be a little bit more surface level. Uh, it's not gonna go into a lot of the exact how-tos, but really narrowing it down to five tips for how you can start improving your use of Parent Square or maybe even realizing some additional things you could be doing in Parent Square just to increase that student that student family engagement. So that goes into the success criteria of how will you know you're successful. It's when you can pick a tip or idea to implement when posting and sending messages via Parent Square. So here's the agenda. I'll just do a quick Parent Square in a nutshell. And then I have narrowed it down to five tips for today. So updating notification settings, writing posts that parents and guardians want to read, ensuring accessibility, utilizing the post add-ons, and then accessing and viewing that delivery report. So Parent Square in a nutshell, as a reminder, Parent Square is Canyon School District's communication platform. And it really is a program designed to foster this communication between schools and families. Uh, it allows messages, announcements, and even reminders to be shared in a secured and unified space, meaning it can be in one location. And then it supports features like two-way messaging and translation services, once again, enhancing that engagement between educators and parents. So the first tip I wanted to share with you is when utilizing Parent Square, you want to ensure that you're updating your notifications. And I have this over two slides because the first notification settings I want to make sure you're aware of and that you do go in and review for yourself. It's your notification settings in your account settings. So you'll see the picture I have on the screen. It's where in the upper right hand corner, you'll see your name. If you click on account on the left hand side, you'll see notification settings. And then the middle of the screen will have the notification settings that you can adjust. So the reason why I recommend this and it's the first tip that I, I wanted to share. It's so you can ensure that you're receiving timely and relevant communications in a way that's going to suit your preferences. So you'll see in the big, in the, this image I'm, I'm circling below, like how do you want to be notified via email, text, or are you going to utilize the Parent Square app? Do you want the messages instantaneously? Do you want them in a digest, meaning you get them all at once? Um, it's interesting how some people really like to get the messages as they're coming, and others would rather just get a digest, meaning kind of a summary at the end of the day of any of the messages that have come through. So that's where, as, a, as an educator, you can decide what's going to fit your your preference. And then once again, updating your, your notification settings allows you to stay informed about important updates, events, without being overwhelmed with unnecessary messages. So, and maybe you don't like doing it via text or even the app and you strictly want email. Once again, that's where you can decide um, the best way to be notified. Um, another notification setting to be aware of as you're, you're creating and sending posts out, you'll see on the left hand or the right hand side of your screen, you have notification options. It'll always default to send at user preferred time. So just like you're able to go into your settings and adjust your notification settings, the families can also do that as well. Um, but there is an option where if you do have a message that you want to make sure it gets out and gets viewed right away, the send instantly will override um, someone's digest settings, meaning they can get it instantaneously. But I do have a note, you want to be careful not to overuse or even abuse that option. Like think about the story of the boy who cried wolf. If you suddenly are sending everything as an, as an emergency, um, overriding what their settings are, people may not take that seriously. So just being aware of there is an option for you when you are creating a post to adjust this notification option, probably nine times out of 10 or 9.9 .9 times out of 10, you're gonna keep it at the, the user's preferred time. But then I also wanted to point out this as well, under post now, there's an arrow off to the side and you can actually schedule your posts. So just because you may be writing it right now, there is a way for you to be ahead of schedule and you could actually have it go out at a certain date and time. So being aware that that's an option as well. Tip number two is writing posts that parents and guardians want to read. Now, trust me, I think we all have that, like, of course they want to read everything that I'm sending, but their lives are busy. Sometimes 
they don't realize that every message that's sent from the educator is important um, or they may not read everything that's in that message. So here's just some tips when writing a post, things to maybe keep in mind to make it something that they will read or at least take away the big things you're hoping to take away. So the first is keep it simple and to the point. Like you want to just, don't use too many flower, flower language. Um, you really just want to get to the point. Um, simple is better. Maybe think about uh, the people who will be receiving your message. Sometimes language can be a barrier as well. So you want to maybe stay away from some academic language that could get lost on the person reading it, or they may just skip over it, not realizing that it really does have context to the sentence. Um, so you want to just be simple to the point. Uh, you also want to structure your message in a way that could be easy to read and understand. Um, so utilizing bullet points, or you could bold and underline or italicize words. Uh, one thing I always recommend when you're bolding words, be aware of what you're bolding, because sometimes as people are scanning messages, and even think about your own experience. When you have something that you're reading and there's a lot of bolded words, you tend to only read what's bolded. Not all the time, but a lot of times that might be what catches your eye. And if you know that there's parents who are busy, they have other messages or other things they're reading, and they may not read every word that you're putting in your message, like every single word, when you're formatting in a way where there's bullets or bolded words, that can actually help um, as they're scanning through to maybe pull out the important pieces of what you're, you're sending to them. And I have an example on the next slide that I'll show you to kind of show you what the, it can look like when you're structuring your message to make it easy to read and understand. Uh, list the most time-sensitive information first. Uh, this is where maybe people will start reading your message and they don't always get to the bottom. I'm guilty of this as well. So if there's anything time, like the most time sensitive, maybe you put that at the beginning of the message because they're more likely to read that and maybe they tell, you know, trail off at the end. Um, if there's anything you want the, your parents guardians to do, you could utilize a call to action. And um, what this means and I'm looking at my notes off to the side so I can make sure I'm, I'm relaying this to you accurately, but this, the call to action should be easily identified and not buried in the middle of your paragraph or an attached PDF. Make your call to action to stand out in your message. That increases the likelihood that they'll find and actually take, take message. So if there's something you would like them to do or you're hoping they would do, make that, once again, I say keep it simple and to the point. Structure it in a way that's easy to understand. Call to action. Kind of put it in their face a little bit. And then the last tip with this one is use a clear, detailed subject line. Like utilize that subject line as a way to communicate what your message is about. Now, of course, you don't want it to be too long, but it could be something that draws their attention. Um, maybe if that's all they read, maybe that's enough information for them to move on. But don't be afraid to be clear and detailed in that subject line. And then one other tip that you could do is it's totally optional is a way to maybe even personalize your, your posts a little bit. Include a weekly student favorite or a personal antidote. It's a way to maybe help the people who are reading your messages, maybe get a glimpse into what your classroom is like, get to know you a little bit. Or sometimes, like I did this once when I had to email, email principals on a weekly basis, I added like a little joke or something. And for one principal who I didn't think he would actually read any of my messages, he actually read it each week just to find my, my joke that I shared. Now, could you do that for everybody? No, but it's just an idea. Um, once again, it helps personalize your, your messages. And on this screen, I actually have two online tools that could support you when writing posts. Um, the first is Magic School AI. If you haven't used this, it's a free online tool that teachers have access to. And it's an AI generator, so it's generative AI where it can actually help you write a professional email, uh, generate an email to families, um, or even an email responder. So you can even put in maybe what you want to say, and it can help refine that message. Um, another tool is Goblin Tools. And this, what I like to use Goblin Tools for is sometimes when you write something, you never under, you never fully know what the other person may um, interpret your tone as. And so if you're ever worried about the tone of the message you're sending out, you could actually use the judge feature of Goblin Tools, and it can actually give you an idea of how your, your message is coming across. 
So just tool tools, you don't have to use them, but I know for myself, they've been two resources that have helped me when it's come to writing communications um, specifically for families. And then this, this um, slide will actually have some examples. So the first one I would actually say is, it's not a horrible example, but you can see the difference where someone reading this, it's not quite obvious from the get-go what this email is all about because um, the subject line is not detailed. Um, some of the information, it's not bulleted. There's no bolded words. So someone could read the paragraph and be fine. But if you look at the other example, same information, but the subject line, a little bit more detailed. This is providing information and tips for tonight's fraction assignment. There are a few bolded words. So if that's the only thing I read, I could get an understanding of, okay, there's a fraction assignment completed by tomorrow morning. Um, I can email the teacher if I have any questions, Monday every three. I, I got a little bit of the gist here without having to read the entire paragraph. Now, once again, hopefully your families are reading everything that you're sending, um, but you can see where just thinking about the way the message is formatted can provide a different experience for the person reading your message. Uh, something else you can do when it comes to writing a post to your families, uh, put yourself in your family's um, shoes. Like after you write something, read it again and maybe um, think about what your experience would be if you were reading it as a parent or guardian of one of your students. Oh, and I also wanted to point out on this slide, I actually have two links to some Parent Square articles where I actually uh, got these tips from. So if you want to read more about what these tips are and even um, other ideas they may have, feel free to click the links at the bottom of this slide and you can access those. So tip number three, uh, this is one that I'm actually even trying to put into my practice and everything I do. So that's why I also wanted to share it as a tip for Parents Square is to ensure accessibility. So really thinking about the families that you are sending your messages to, uh, you wanna, especially if you have parents or guardians out there that utilize screen readers, and there may be more than you think. So when it comes to using screen readers, one thing that I like to really put into my practice is my formatting considerations when I'm writing a message. So you wanna think about the font color and size, uh, ideally, black or a really dark color is, and on, on white background is the best. Um, when it comes to size, uh, nothing less than 12 point is ideal. Anything smaller than 12 point can be difficult for someone who maybe has some visual um, impairments. They won't be able to technically read it. So really consider that font, font color and size. It's not that you can't ever use any colors, but just also recognize, too, if you're indicating specific pieces of your of your writing and the color coding is helping, you may have users who are, or families who are reading your post and they're colorblind. So you have these beautiful colors and um, they're doing a great job identifying different pieces of whatever it is you're talking about, but it's lost on them because they don't see the difference in color. So just be aware of that. Um, when you are writing your, your message, you wanna utilize the bulleted or numbered list. And I'm gonna show you that, um, let me jump over to Parent Square. So when you're in, when you're editing a post, when I say use the bulleted list, it's, uh, where is it? I'm gonna put, it's actually the list option here. And for some reason, <laughs> oh, I'm laughing because it's not showing up. So it's when, um, I'm gonna write bulleted list. And I'm sure you've seen it, but it's when you're writing and then there's actually an option up here to click on like the bullet. I actually don't know why I'm not seeing it right now, but um, it would be up here with little bullets off to the side. And actually, I'm just going to click. There's the alignment. Here we go. Sorry, the more paragraph. You can see where I can use the bulleted list or I can use the numbered list. This is what, when someone's utilizing a parent or a screen reader, this will actually help the screen reader know that it's a list um, within the context. What I've seen some teachers do is when they want to do a list, they just press the return key to go to the next line. They might hit the space, the number, and then they type their list. So when you do it that way, the screen reader doesn't recognize that it's a bulleted list. This is using, using this list options and it's the paragraph. Um, the other thing on this 
to have considerations is when you're adding an image, you want to consider using alt text, especially if someone um, is utilizing a screen reader. If it's a decorative image, it's usually okay not to add alt text. But um, when you're adding images, and once again, I've been trying to put this into my practice just so it becomes habit. Once you add a picture, you'll see the little I. That's how I can type in the alternative text. And usually with alternative text, you want to just describe what the image is about. So I would call this like mountain with um, technology inside. Like it just helps describe what the image is. So someone who maybe can't see the image can actually understand what the image is all about. Um, if you're going to provide videos, if possible, provide a transcript or utilize a program that has closed captioning. Uh, when I do videos, I use Loom and Loom will provide closed captions as part of the program. Or when I upload videos to YouTube, YouTube also will help provide captions for my video. Um, one thing you want to do is just maybe watch the video after just to make sure the captions are accurate. Uh, something else to think about is um, ensure, oh sorry, avoid using all caps. Sometimes all caps can come across as yelling, um, but also if someone's utilizing um, a screen reader, when something's in all caps, it recognizes it as a acronym, meaning it will read out the letters. So if I had a screen reader reading right now, it would be like, avoid using all C-A-P-S. So just keeping that in mind of what the experience could be for someone utilizing a screen reader. And then, I didn't want to go to full screen on this yet because I wanted to jump over back to Parent Square to show you this. Um, something else you want to do when you're providing links to um, parents, you want to avoid typing or providing the entire URL, especially when they're super long. Um, and you want to avoid using words like click here or link um, to make a link accessible. Like if I wanted to make a link to the Canyon School District website, rather than doing the HTTPS and this, um, this URL isn't massively long, but what the screen reader will do is it will read HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash canyonsdistrict.org. So you'll see, especially if it's longer than that, um, it can be kind of painful for the person to listen to. What you can do is when you're adding a link, I can paste the URL where it says URL. So I'm just going to copy that here. And then where it says text, you can say Canyons District website and then insert. So that way this Canyon School District then becomes the website and you can still do this within context. So you can say visit the Canyon School District website to view. And if you've been on different websites or other web pages, you may see that this this idea has been used more and more. It's really putting the links within context of whatever it is you're reading. So once again, for someone utilizing a screen reader, if you say click here or click the blue text, they don't know where here is or what the blue text is. So this is how using the descriptive text is making the links more accessible. And then I have PDFs on here as well. Just if you're attaching or providing PDFs, you just want to double check to make sure your PDFs are accessible. Not all PDFs are created equal, uh, not all, meaning not all PDFs could be read by a screen reader. One trick that I have that I've learned is if you have a PDF, if you use your mouse and you scroll over, like you use your mouse um, to scroll over the words, if it will select each of the words, that's a good indicator that your PDF is accessible. And if you need help with how, how to make a PDF accessible or how you want more information about that, reach out to me and I'm happy to work with you on that. And then the second thing about ensuring accessibility, one, I started with the formatting considerations. This one is utilizing the two-way translation feature. This is one of the big reasons why, I mean, I guess I can't say that because I don't know it for sure, but I, my assumption and presumption is this was a big reason why Parent Square was looked at, um, at for our district is it really does support translation across over 100 languages. Um, messages are translated in real time as they're sent and received. This is also available for direct messaging between parents, guardians, and teachers. And the user can control and update um, and select their preferred language in their account settings, meaning you as the teacher can do that as well. Now, I believe at Square, uh, when the accounts are created for families, 
Um, it does, based on what their home language is set up in Skyward, it should automatically update that in Parent Square. But once again, I can never always guarantee that's going to be that way. Or maybe their home language in, in uh, Skyward is Spanish, but they actually still prefer to get their messages in English. So you may want to support or help teach parents know that they can go into their account settings and adjust that language if they choose to. And so, uh, oh, this is the picture of it. So you'll see where in my account settings, um, just like getting to my notifications, uh, I go to my language settings, and this is where you'll see where you can change the preferred language. You can even search or you can scroll through the options that are available. Uh, tip number four is to utilize the post add-ons. Now, this doesn't mean you have to utilize them in every single post that you are going to uh, uh, send out, but there's things that they're worth checking out and starting to put into your practice when applicable. So there's the calendar entry or RSVP. This is where you can set dates, start and end time, send reminders. This is supposed to say require an RSVP. And when when a parent or a guardian gets this calendar um, post from you, they could actually add that calendar to or that calendar information to their calendar. So it's a way to, way to really help communicate important dates, um, reminders, um, things like that. Uh, you have the option to attach photos or files to posts that you send out. Um, what's really nice about this as well is when you're wanting to attach, it'll connect to your Google Drive. Um, you can provide a link or you can actually upload a file from your computer. Uh, so there's multiple ways to access files that you want to attach. Um, there's a forms and permissions option where you can actually set up forms for parents or permission slips for parents to sign and send back. Um, one thing I like about this feature, if there's student information required, it will auto-populate some of the student information for you. And then if you want to know more specifically about this one, we did do a bite-sized PD last year on using Parent Square for disclosures and parent or permission slips. So I encourage you to check this out if this is like kind of like um, this interests you at all. Uh, you can also utilize Parent Square to ask for items, meaning you can indicate when you need things by, what you need, and how much of it you need. And then uh, you can also utilize it to request volunteers for your classroom or an activity that you might have coming up. And then tip number five is to access and view the delivery report. Um, what this allows you to do is it allows you to, know, to understand who's been notified. It can help you identify any emails or phone numbers that aren't working or maybe they're getting bounced back. Um, you can see anyone who is posting appreciations. Like you can even say, please like my post so I know that you've read it. Um, you can have quick access to RSVPs. And then you'll see on the, the pictures here, so I have like the notified, this number will change as people are viewing it. And this is what you can click on. Unfortunately, I'm not able to actually show you an example of what the next screen looks like. But if you click on this notified, um, it can actually give you a report of who's seen it and then who ha hasn't seen it yet. And then that's where you can get the information about any emails or phone numbers that aren't working. And then you'll see where uh, I can see any comments that have been posted. And what's nice about the comments is only the teacher can view the comment and the individual who sent it. It's not like Facebook where you're going to see all of the comments and replies. So it's just for the teacher and the person who posted the initial comment. And then you'll even see who's appreciated the post. So this is Parent Square in a nutshell. And so if you've gone through this and you're like, well, I still need to get started with Parent Square, this checklist here is set up for anyone new and wants to maybe get started. Um, and all the links will provide some more uh, how-to videos and information for you to follow. I'm also a resource you can reach out to if you have any questions or need support. So thank you for watching this Bite Size PD. Uh, the, there's the link to our Bite Size PD page to access any of the other PDs we have. And then if you want relicensure credit for this session, just make sure you fill out this form. And then my name is Camille Cole, and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions um, or need further clarification and support on anything covered in this Bite Size PD.